Hello everyone, I'm Jim, this is my good friend Phil, and we are here to talk to you to end start a brand new series, Godzilla History. So, how better to start than with the start? Pretty much. We're talking about Gojira, or Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And before we can get into the film, we should go a little bit into the actual history of just how this film came to be. I should, should also mention that uh, this is also uh, going to be a short series, and we're leading up to the release of Shin Gojira, which is coming yep. out on DVD and Blu-ray on, uh, was it March? J Japan in March. There's no release date quite yet for North America, but Not I'm yet. thinking it's going to be in the April-May area. More than likely, yeah. But we'll, we'll check in with Funimation on that. We'll find it, yeah. So, before we can get into the film itself, let's go into a bit of the history prior to the filming of yep. Godzilla, and no better way to start than with the Lucky Dragon incident. That was that was one of the big incidents. That was yeah. one of the as I always said one of the two big influences on. on yeah. uh, and we'll get to yeah. twenty thousand fathoms in just a bit. But yeah. the Lucky Dragon incident was an incident that happened when they were doing some H bomb tests, mm -hmm. and un unfortunately, a Japanese tuna boat got irradiated, and the fishermen. They were the area was supposed to be clear, and they yeah. had said they were giving notices, but there there sort of wasn't, and one fishing boat got stranded yeah. out there, and uh, it was it was kind of a sad incident. Uh, yeah, there was. And yeah, it they led the director to find that as an idea to bring one of the things. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was quite heavily in the news at the time. So yeah. they they yeah. Though a lot of people don't know about it now. So, no, obviously, yeah, yeah no, obviously not now. No, over over seventy years later, but um, yeah. Yeah, at the time it was it was kind of a tragic incident, and and uh, but it it was another eye opener to uh, the the devastation the, that uh, the test the, the the testing of these H bombs were doing at the time and yeah. how it could affect people. So and of course at the time as well, B movies were the big thing in, in yeah. North America. Yeah, I mean we were, had George Powell's War of the Worlds. We had I Beast mean, from sure. Twenty Thousand Fathoms. Yeah. We had. A whole bunch of nuclear monsters. Oh yeah, giant was, creatures. And, and all of the, the filmmakers 50s. at the time were trying to make yeah. points about that, and yeah. they would make these, of course, these cheesy B movies, and that were that were in you know dime theaters and Saturday yeah. afternoon sort of thing. But but and they were trying to make it points being about it. North American, they were always on the side of America. Sure, yeah, yeah. We didn't get that Japanese perspective until mm -hmm. way later when they actually released. Mm -hmm this film uncut, yeah. because when they released the American well, version, a lot of mm -hmm. what is in the Japanese version was cut. Mm -hmm. And I should mention too, I mean, after the, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, obviously that's another big influence on oh, it, yeah. <laughs> but they really didn't tell North Americans what kind of horrors that created. They, yeah. they had no idea and how how the kind of illnesses that caused. And, and one of the big what, differences between the American version and the Japanese version is they show it. Yes. Yeah. They <laughs> they, they actually really show all that out. They, in, in, yeah, and they show the horror that happens yes. when a giant, hundred and fifty sure. foot tall irradiated monster comes to town. True. Yeah. yeah. And what happens to people? Um, quite honestly, the Japanese film. Far and above is a oh, yes. way better film than yeah. the American version. Absolutely. And to go back into a little bit of the, the history of it, some of the little bit of the boring history I'll cover really quick. But they, um, uh, Tomio Tanaka was actually, um, he, I'm sure he was probably kicking around the idea and had already was in discussions with, oh. with the execs at the studio. But they had another film project in mind. He was supposed to go to Indonesia. And he was on a trip to Indonesia on doing a, I don't know if it was actually a romance story, but it was tied around to do with the occupation of Japan in Indonesia during yeah. the war. Well, when he went there, um, they couldn't get the visas to shoot. They didn't like the idea of it. They sent him home. And it was on his way back home that, that he was, I think he was determined now to do his monster idea that he wanted yeah. to. He had, they, the filmmakers were already familiar with King Kong and were yeah. fans of it. They, he had seen recently A Beast from 20,000 Fathoms because it was released worldwide yeah. uh, just before that in 53. So he was on the flight back and he was, as the story goes, is that he was on the flight looking out over the ocean and was envisioning 
the idea of, of this monster coming out out of the water, similar to Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, but what if it had been affected by the H-bomb? What if it had yep. become disfigured and became even something more horrible and destructive uh, yep. than what was depicted? Uh, and that's where the Lucky Dragon comes in. Absolutely, yes. That's kind of where the film starts. And that, yeah, and yeah. They, that incident was also so fresh in their mind. So the combination of all those things yeah. brought it back to the execs. And uh, it took them a while to, they, they batted around a script for a number a number of months. Yeah. And uh, to tell you the kind of production time schedule they were on, they didn't get greenlit until April of 1954. Yeah. And the film wasn't released until November of 54. So in a very tight period between yeah. when they greenlit it and, and yeah. it got into theaters was a tight amount of time. Uh, Subaraya is famously quoted as saying that if he were wanting to do the film the way he wanted to originally, mm. it would have taken seven plus years. It would have, yeah, yeah. yeah. They wanted, I mean, they were... They wanted of, stop motion. They did, yeah. they did. They, and I think they... There's one or two scenes that are stop motion. There but is. The tail. Was yeah, the tail was, and yeah. I think one... Um, Seen where he attacks, but I'm not 100 percent on that. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was stop motion. It was a camera trick with it. But yeah. I think I remember what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, they uh, they could have uh, they did have some skills in stop motion. They didn't have obviously they didn't have Ray yeah. Harryhausen uh, or so, Will also yeah, 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 and they, they but yeah they. Um, so they were rushed into production, and, they, and of course that's what led them into doing the famous suit nation. Yeah, that they have today. Mm -hmm. So. Boy, oh boy, I would not want to be that man. <laughs> no, that was that was a daunting task. Yeah. That was yeah. over twenty pounds lost and fainting. Yeah. And well, the suit was over well over two hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, uh, I had the wonderful pleasure of actually um, meeting Haru Nakajima at, at mm. the conventions and hearing the stories that he told about the problems and issues. They had there was actually two actors. Haru Nakajima was the main one who did most of the work, but it, to be a suitmation actor. You, they had to have somebody who was willing to tough it up and be willing to go through the grueling exercises. They insisted on hiring people who were trained in martial arts because they needed the mindset. Not uh, to mention to the body of movement. Yes, yeah. To be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and he um, and he said himself he went to zoos and and uh, studied the watched the motion of elephants. Yeah. Uh, to get the idea of that that lumbering of the slow motion. lumbering creature yeah. coming yeah. through the city, yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit too, just to cover, I don't know, uh, you know, hitting on it already was the, to come up the name as well, uh, the combination of whale and ape, and ape and yeah. gor gor whale and gorilla came yeah. up with because uh, uh, Kojira uh, with a K is yeah. is what they call a whale. And they had even batted around, they had some designs that they were doing to make it somehow this weird yeah. combination of that sort of thing, but they didn't like it. They did three initial designs, and some of them you still see in artwork and whatnot, yeah. that, some and from the time. A lot of that, and, unfortunately, though, long since destroyed and oh, lost. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, but uh, some of it, they had three designs that the, um, the execs went, okay, we're going to pick this one. And uh, but some of those designs you still see floating around. You'll see in pictures, and and the yeah. one had more of a bubble texture to the skin. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. Um, I seem to remember. Now correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but there was a picture that never made it into the film of Godzilla eating uh, animals. And oh yeah, I heard something about that. That he yeah. was supposed to. He yeah, when his head pops over his first appearance yeah, when his it was originally over. supposed to be holding a cow or something he does he has something in his mouth and yeah. it didn't work right it didn't look right and they yeah. thought it was it didn't work so they left it out yeah um, but that's one of those know. rarities that sure. very few have ever heard about yeah. or seen but yeah. it does exist there was some test photos yeah. yeah and they felt it didn't look right yeah yeah because this was, don't worry, this was treated very seriously at the time. Oh, yes. Most people remember Godzilla movies as later as they got a little bit campy yeah. and low budget. Yeah. No, the original but, film was a much more serious oh, yeah. take. Yeah. yeah. Though it did have its share of oddities sure. with the, the ro three way romance between yeah. Yeah. Ogata, Fu uh, Fumiko, and, or Emiko, sorry, and uh, Sarazawa. Yeah. And I can't Which really... more or less got excised in the American. Yeah, version. they kind of trimmed it down. It's still yeah. there, it exists, but it's not emphasized as much. Yeah. And I can't help but wonder, and I'd have to kind of look into the details more, if that was something that was carried over from the original concept for the Indonesian film that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I think because that was supposed to be about a love triangle. Yeah. And and that, so I think part of that is what they carried over into this film as is, is, uh, the human drama to carry people into the, into the story. Yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah, so, but um, they, again, they, this, you can imagine the schedule they were shooting on. They, the principal photography took, I think they said something. They only like had a, a half. couple months, yeah. Yeah, the principal photography itself for the actors was a month and a half. The effects took two and a half months, and then the rest of the time was just editing it and, and getting into the theaters yeah. in time, so. But, um, yeah, you can, you can see they, they picked a, a, a stock, a film stock that was, yeah. that was supposed to be grainy, yeah. and gritty. Kind of uh, Unfortunately, even with the DVD copies that we've been watching, yeah. it's it, the quality is not all there. Um, yeah. I wanted to check out the Criterion version, but I could not find my copy. So uh. um, once I do, I'll gladly do an update on the quality of the image. But sure, uh, yeah, that would be a good follow up to to look at that. But, but uh, as a film, you can really see the quality drop and increase when you go into the American version, because they were using a different film. Yeah, they used a different film stock. I mean, yeah. when they wanted to Americanize it, remember the time, they, they were doing 50s B movies, yeah. you know, they and so and the, they weren't the stark contrast. It wasn't, yeah. if you look at 50s B movies, they had more gray tones. Yeah. Uh, the, but yeah. when they Americanized it, mm. and they really <laughs> Americanized oh, yeah. it, yeah. because they made Steve... Uh, Martin, the star of the yeah. movie, uh, and yeah. Yeah. They, it really kind of wrecked the film in a way. Yeah. I mean, it's still a good movie. It's yeah, it's still watchable because they but kept all the monster a, scenes in. But. A lot of the imagery and mm -hmm. subtext is gone. It is, yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, it kind of wrecks the ending as well. Yeah, you you lose the full impact of the ending and, yeah. because it you you have this. Uh, uh, remember that for the Japanese audiences, they're trying to make a message at yeah. that point. Uh, and what's kind of sad is that they kind of lost that on the American side of it. They just wanted to make a B movie, so they yeah. brought in this actor. You can see uh, on uh, on the girl, um, yeah, uh, the, the body doubles. Yeah, yeah, you can tell the hair is slightly different. They didn't quite yeah. match the outfit a hundred percent, but yeah. you know, they try to get as much as they can. The film stock is obviously different when it jumps back and forth. Yeah, the dubbing is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and they right. didn't even bother dubbing a lot of it either. No, they didn't. So, they, didn't yeah. they didn't bother with lip syncing properly and that yeah. kind of thing. They just kind of put in the dialogue. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it just, it doesn't, it, it yeah. But I it, mean, for me, the non-dubbing of the Japanese people, mm -hmm. it makes it a bit more real. Mm -hmm. But I get it when people aren't, especially in that time period, that people would kind of be not liking that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't. Nobody. They don't th feel that North American audiences are going to sit and read subtitles. Yeah, and they're so, not. Not in that day and age. No. Not, no. 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 Not at all. So the film did amazingly well. Oh, both. For, both of them did. Actually. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. They're both hit. So I mean, it, it at least started something. Anyway, yeah. it brought about some kind of awareness. Anyways, and it, yeah. which which was, which was their, their goal essentially, but. Um, yeah, if you have a chance to watch the the if you get a chance if you haven't seen the fifty four Gojira and it's yeah. it's now become years ago you couldn't find it at all. No, and now it's up until at least two thousand. <laughs> yeah, there was no way to see it. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't. It wasn't until the the rights were kind of released for that. Yeah, and um, thankfully DVD got us that. The interesting thing too is that the aspect ratio. Yeah. Was something that was kind of that threw me off the first time I found it because I kept trying to find a widescreen version of it. But yeah. no, it's actually a four to three aspect ratio. Yeah. The original movie, so there is that is the only ex the full That's how it is. cut of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is, is four by three. So if it says widescreen. It's going to be half your screen. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just how it was filmed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the stock they went with. So, but um, and of course. You can't deny the 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 impact of the score that was written no, by the, Kira uh, Kube. Yeah, I mean some of that stuff is still with us today, it's and it just works magically. Piece of music that he wrote for that. They mm -hmm. used some of that in the Shin Shin Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shin Gojira. They actually brought back into it, and it's it still holds up in that film. Some because mm -hmm. some people. I had a friend of mine that came with me who's not really familiar with the Godzilla movies and didn't know that was like you know a. a 60 plus year old piece of music that they yeah. put in there it but the, it, it does give that very starch pounding yeah. sense to yeah. to what's going on and yeah. i mean when you're trying to convey just something that big and 
terrible and happening. Horrible. It, it, yeah. it really conveys it in a yeah. almost magical mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even the more somber scenes mm -hmm. where you just see the people in the hospital, radiation burns mm -hmm. and everything, and there's a low tone music just playing the underneath music, it. Yeah. It is absolutely haunting. Yeah. The uh, the piece for that I think is called the Prayer for Peace. Yes. And if I remember, then it, it dissolves into the the choir of the girls singing. Yeah. I had thought, and people had thought for years that that was um, footage from the war, and actually that was they assembled that for the movie. They yeah. wanted that scene, and they actually got. But they wanted the it to be as real as possible. Yes. Yeah. And they did. It works so it well. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's it, this is not a, a unfortunately a when it movie. came over to America, a lot of it was just cut, <clears throat> and you lose that impact, <clears throat> especially when they throw in the American actor. Yeah, that and that's why yeah. they obviously have to cut it. Well, a they want to cut down time, yeah. obviously because they try. Well, to cut it was a ninety-eight minute movie. Yeah, you cut down to eighty minutes. So. Eighty, yes, yeah, eighty to eighty-three minutes, yeah. and uh, so and they had to cut it even more out because they have to fit in. Yeah. Raymond Burr yeah. in there. Yeah. But 20 so, or so minutes was cut out? Yeah, at least. Give or take? Yeah. At least. Because there is a lot of shots. Granted, if you watch the original movie, yeah. there is a lot of shots um, that are... Sorry, my friends just went by the window. Um, there is a there is quite a lot of shots of the military. Yeah. And you see... Um, there's long shots of just tanks pulling out. Yeah. And you get the march, the big... Uh, resounding uh, if a Kubing marches. Yep. Some of these do go on for a bit of time. So yep. that's probably where they but did edit some that's pieces That's standard in it is, films. It, they, the they pad yeah. them. But yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, and it's not to say, too, that the... If you ever see the 56 version, that's the one I, I grew up with. It's not yeah. to say that. That's, that's the one I grew up with as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, we it's not did. to say that it can't make any kind of impact. That it's no. not. It, it's, it's still cool. made an impact. It, it does, it's still yeah. a good film. It is. It's just not as powerful. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, because you, yeah, you're gonna lose. All, as you said, you lose all the subtext. And yeah. Whatnot, but, but, um, and that it's and they the funny thing is they did that. Um, I not. I believe when I first saw. Back in about 2005, 2006, when I first got a DVD copy of the original Gojira, I think the ending actually made me cry. Oh, I think it me as well. I Because there was just so much more there mm -hmm. than the American version of the ending. Mm -hmm. I remember when I, when I was little, and I used to used to watch Godzilla movies on, on WAB Channel 43 Cleveland, watch it on Superhost Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. A lot of people remember him. I remember and, WUTV oh, showing right? all the giant monsters. Okay, films. yeah, and uh, so I was, I was still. I mean, the first one was Godzilla vs. the Thing. Yep. I'd seen Destroy All Monsters. I'd seen Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. These are movies where, except for Godzilla vs. the Thing, they're all um, Godzilla is the hero, and it's yep. the shot in color and bright yep. color and the yep. colorful monsters. And I kept saying, well, I always wanted to see the original. I knew it was this old black and white movie, and I had no idea what it was. I just thought yep. it was going to be Godzilla shows up, destroy a city. And I didn't, uh, you know, I, I had read he was stopped by a oxygen destroyer, and I had no idea what that meant. Yeah. So when I finally got around, they finally showed it, and it was edited to shit, because this is, now you've got a movie already edited down to 83 minutes. Now they yeah. edit more out for commercials. For TV, yeah. So it's way cut down. But even that, I, when I finally saw it, the ending was so impacting on me that mm -hmm. it was just like, ah. <laughs> yeah. I did, But they really didn't expect, to make another one, they kind of no. had one little line of dialogue dropped in the end in case they wanted to do another yeah. one. That you know, he that the scientist said, "Oh, I, I, I you know, it's I can't." The believe, last of his species. Yeah, I can't believe this. This could be the absolute last. This could yeah. happen again. So yeah. obviously, that's yeah, and it yeah. did so well that they decided to cash in on that. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the, it's, that was kind of the. And they, they of yeah. course, jumped into it right away. Actually, not only jump right into doing another movie right away, they did Rodan, yeah. uh, they did Veron. It was such a huge hit, they were like, we got to do more monsters, so... And boy, did they. Did they ever, because I don't think they actually even entitled, in, intended sorry, to do any of the big Versus movies right yeah. away. It was just, let's do, you know, they had um, Godzilla, what's called Godzilla Raids Again, or yeah. Godzilla Counterattack, whatever title you want to go yeah. by. That jump right into production, which didn't even have Honda in it, uh, yeah. Ashur Honda, because he was busy doing Rodan and Veron and Mothra and wanted to get all these in. So they were doing all these one offs after that. Yeah. And then it, it just, that eventually kind of led into the, it wasn't until 
really, even though he fought Anguillus in, in the second one, it really wasn't until they did King Kong versus Godzilla that that led into the versus movies. Yeah. And we'll, we'll leave that. That's going to be in the next That's, video. That, that'll be in the next, next video. Because so, yeah, we have a lot of movies to talk about. Is, next, one, we're, next video, we're just going to sort of do an over coverage of the rest of the Showa series. Yeah. And we'll <laughs> but there's there. a lot of stuff we have to discuss. And, yeah. Uh, I thought, I um, is there anything else that you wanted to discuss about the I, first Godzilla? I, I think that about kind of covered everything off the top of my head, unless there's something I'm missing that you've got there. Uh, I, no. I'm sure there's, you know, the funny thing is I thought when, when in doing this, I know, the, um, uh, you go on YouTube, of course, and there's okay. lots lots of people who are covering, there's lots of reviews oh, yeah. in the, oh, the yeah. movie. But, uh, but Most it, of them are comedies or uh, sure, making yeah. fun of it. Yeah, yeah but, but well, there's even the few serious fans out there that probably oh, yeah. even, I'll tell you right now, there's probably people out there who, even though I've been watching these movies since I was like, six or seven years old, so it's been 40 yeah. plus years. <clears throat> so it's been a long time since I've been watching these, and I was a huge Geek Out fan, just like yeah. a lot of the big name fans out there. I'm sure probably I we may have gotten some points wrong. Don't be afraid to go ahead oh, and, yeah. and... Feel and free! If we made mistakes, please correct us. Uh, if you know maybe we're only getting a piece of the story, you know something more behind it. I'd love yeah. to know. I'd love to know more about the history that I could, yeah. be, could be missing on I some mean, of this. We can't know everything, and we certainly can't yeah. research everything in no. a short the, amount of time. Uh, the, the main book was... Um, I was thinking about this earlier today, that probably the, the best book, if you really want to find a lot of the details, other than just kind of looking up online, but it was, was it David Collat who did the I definitive, think oh, so. isn't this terrible, I was thinking about it now, and now I'm drawing a blank for the video. <laughs> we'll put it on the video Put the description later, down yeah. in the doobly-doo down below. Yep, yep, yep. It's uh, David Collat's Critical History of Godzilla Movies, I think mm -hmm. it was called, I think it's, I forgot the right name, the right author. <laughs> I'll, I'll double check it. We'll put it below. We'll put it below. Whoa, isn't that <laughs> awful? I'm drawing a blank now that the camera's Maybe on. Maybe we'll just have it flashing there. up on the screen. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, it's it's still fun for me to kind of learn about yeah. all this stuff, even years and, and years later. I mean, re-watching these films, mm -hmm. there's always things that you see that you didn't see before. Absolutely, or yeah. Stuff it's... that will make you go, hmm. Well, <laughs> and you, you know, when you think about the, the limited resources that they had, what yeah. they had to throw together in such a short amount of time, and what they did yeah. to, to pull together uh, 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 the first time they ever made a costume like that for mm -hmm. for yeah. a film for a film of yeah. that type of film and of that caliber, yeah. you know, this went way and above even stuff that they were doing in in North America when they were doing their, their dinosaur movies and that that were. Yeah. This was really something else that they were really trying to pull off for the first time in such a short amount of time that, you know, props to them for putting that together. It, um, uh, it, it was, and, and it led into, that led into a whole new genre of, yep. of films. That it's a genre that's still going. Still going today, uh, yeah. And has had many spin-offs and... Has influenced and, other filmmakers. Yep. And, and, uh, and I mean, we can't bring up Godzilla without bringing up a certain turtle that flies. Yes. Yeah, uh, but we'll probably talk about him later. I mentioned that in the Showa series about oh, yeah. how they, they wanted to yeah bring that into it. And, yeah, we'll mm -hmm. mention that by, it's by a different company. But, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Toho, Toho was not originally... Um, uh, uh, they weren't originally a film company. Yeah. I mean, it was... <laughs> they they what, deal more in... in Stocks of real estate or something. I believe they, they were a really yeah, real estate company, yeah. um, like Nintendo was a card company yeah. before it was a video game company and yeah. slash toy company before video games. But yeah, of course they're they're business people like everyone else. Right? I mean, they, yeah. they, to them it was very important what was making money. Yeah. So whatever they they chose to put investments in, they wanted to make sure they got a return on it. So that yeah. was that was. And the big boy, thing. how did they get a return? They, they did on that, and sadly it went kind of downhill over the years, which we'll yeah. cover in a later video. But yeah. yeah, with the good, there's always the bad, the bad and yeah. boy oh boy, yeah. there's some bad. Yeah. <laughs> bad. But yeah. again, that'll be next time. Nice. Thanks, man. All right, so. That brings us to the close of the mm. first episode of the history of Godzilla. Mm. If you like this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in just a few weeks with part two, the Showa series. Cheers, everyone.